Welcome back to the channel everybody. This is my 1929 Caterpillar 10. I purchased this machine about a year and a half ago. I got it with a one-way snowplow blade on the front that had a hand-operated cable lift mechanism. And all of that has since been removed from the machine. Um, this tractor is an older restoration, about 15 years old now, and there are a few mechanical problems that are going to need fixing. So I got the blade and the lift mechanism off of the tractor to open everything up so that I could access the machine a bit more and do some of the repairs that it needs. So today I'm going to be splitting the tractor, taking the engine off of the rear end so I can access the clutch housing area and replace the throw-out bearing for the main clutch. When the clutch pedal is pressed, there is a very loud noise that comes from this area and the pedal vibrates and bounces around. It just seems like it's got a throw-out bearing that's really out of it. So I figured I'll just make a video of the whole process and get it put up on YouTube, hopefully for everyone to enjoy. So let's get started. Start things off by removing the hood. And then the fuel tank. And finally the heat shield. Now I want to take the engine side panels off. This right side one is pretty self-explanatory. Remove the bolts and the panel will come out. But the left side one here has a little bit more to it. I'm going to have to remove this choke linkage and control rod before I can get this one taken off. So now I want to get the dash panel out of the way and that's going to involve a little bit of work because so many things either attach to it or pass through it. So I'll begin this process by removing the air cleaner. And now I will disconnect the oil line from the oil pressure gauge. Over on the other side of the dash now, I need to remove the heat control lever and rod where it goes through the dash. Next I need to disconnect this throttle linkage where it runs through the bottom of the dash down here and I'll also get this pivot lever removed from the bracket on the dash as well. Okay guys I've come upon my first bit of difficulty here as happens when working on these old machines sometimes things don't want to come apart and this pin down here that goes through the bell crank for the linkage that passes through the dash this pin will not come out it's absolutely seized in there so I'm going to take this throttle linkage out as one piece and get it in on the bench where I can work on it a little easier and get all that stuff apart. So I disconnected it out here at the rod end on the engine and get the pivot lever off of the bracket. And since I need to remove these foot plates anyhow, I'm going to get the right side plate unbolted and get it out of the way and then withdraw that entire linkage out of the dash and like I said before, get it into the workbench where I can get everything freed up and uh, get it apart. So I have the foot plate unbolted from the dash at the top and also unbolted from the final drive case at the bottom. And one thing to note, I was pleasantly surprised to realize that of the nuts and bolts that hold the top section to the bottom section of this foot plate, that all the nuts were welded on the back side of this top extension piece. So 
I was very happy not to have to get a wrench back there and hold on to those while I was trying to take the bolts out. Now that the foot plate is out of the way, I will get that stubborn throttle linkage removed. And this left side foot plate comes apart the same way. So now that both foot plates are out of the way, I can finally get this dash removed. So I took all of the bolts out that go through the fenders and into the dash. And I also loosened the fender bolts that are back here in front of the sprocket where they go into each final drive case. Did that on both sides. That's gonna allow me to get the fenders splayed out a little bit and get some of the bind off of the dash. I also took all the bolts out that hold the dash to the bell housing flange. So now hopefully I can get this pulled out. It's really starting to open up around the engine and the next three pieces I'm going to remove is kind of an elective thing. They don't really have to be removed to do this job, but I'm going to take the carburetor off. I'm also going to get the generator off and I'm going to remove the manifolds. Um, kind of to protect these pieces, they stick out, can get hung on things. Um, I really don't want to break anything. You know, a carburetor generator would be Difficult to replace, expensive too. Same with the manifold. And I, I want to get the manifold off anyhow because someone reused the old gasket and there's this high temp orange RTV sticking out everywhere. So I want to get a new gasket placed under that anyway. So I'll get those three pieces off now. Now it's time to disengage the engine flywheel from the main clutch pressure plate. And working in through the opening in the top of the bell housing, you'll see there are six flywheel studs that pass through the pressure plate. Each stud has a nut, washer, and spring on it. And what I've done up to this point is rotating the engine over by hand, positioned each one of these studs up at the top in this opening here, and I've backed the nut off of each one, thus decreasing the amount of spring tension on each stud. Now that the spring tension has been pretty well removed from the pressure plate, I'll work my way back through one at a time and I'll remove the nut and the washer and the spring from each stud. Once I get all six of those completely disconnected, that will allow the flywheel to disengage from the pressure plate when the engine is being removed. Now it's time to get the mainspring taken out from under the engine and to start that process remove the nut and bolt on each side for the spring cover. Take what is left of the cover off. Originally these had leather boots tacked to them up here on this end and that boot surrounded the mainspring and kind of helped to keep dirt and debris from getting down in the spring perch area but the majority of these cats uh, have no boot left on them unless a new leather one has been installed. I'll also remove the spring stop pin from each side. Down here under the tractor now, I need to disconnect this small equalizer spring from underneath the mainspring in order to get the mainspring free from the chassis. And this small equalizer spring is what captures the mainspring and keeps it attached to the chassis. It's a very important piece and it does that job via these links and pins. And once again, I am fighting rusted and stuck pins. I can't even rotate these in their bores. So rather than try to disconnect these pins and links, I'm going to have to take the mainspring, equalizer spring, links, pins, and anchor blocks out as one assembly. So I've disconnected the anchor blocks from the sides of the oil pan. And in order to get the anchor blocks off of those studs, I'm going to use this jack and put just enough upward pressure on this small equalizer spring to take the tension 
off of that stud where it goes through the block. That way I can slide the block free from the stud on each side and I'll have the mainspring here disconnected. Now that I've got the mainspring completely disconnected from everything, it's time to lift the engine enough to permit removal of the spring. And to do that, I've fabricated some engine lifting brackets. Got some good attachment points at the front. This one utilizes the generator mounting holes. And I made this one to go over the two front manifold studs and also put a small brace in there to keep it from uh, flexing inward too much. So I'm going to start out by attaching to the front two mounts. I'm going to lift the whole chassis and then I'll get the spring taken out. And I've also got the two lowermost bell housing bolts removed already because once the spring is out of there, I don't plan on getting back underneath the engine. There you go, the main spring is out. Nothing left holding the front of the chassis up except for the loader and the chains. And I've leveled the forks back out and I've got the front lifting bar placed on. And I've got that hooked to the bracket on the bell housing. So I'm ready to start taking the bell housing bolts out now. And then we'll try and get this thing separated from the rear end. All right, getting ready to pull the engine. Just a couple bolts left in. And I've got my blocking all underneath the chassis under the rear end so that when the engine comes free, everything will stay level. Start taking her back, easy. Good, we're clear. Now that we've finally got the engine out of the way, I'm just going to take the clutch disc off. Still looks pretty good. And now I'm finally ready to remove the pressure plate with the throwout bearing attached. They come out as an assembly. So to do that, I'll flop the clutch pedal back and I'll remove this actuation lever from the end of the throwout bearing yoke shaft. And with that lever out of the way, it is now possible for the clutch shaft to rotate far enough forward for the fingers to disengage the throwout bearing yoke and the pressure plate and throwout bearing can be removed from the input shaft. Here we are in the shop. I've got the pressure plate and throwout bearing assembly on the bench and I'm pretty sure this is the noise I was hearing. That bearing is very rough and quite loose too. So to get the bearing out, first I'm going to peel out this snap ring, then I'm going to take this stamped steel washer out from under it. Snap ring, washer. Next I have to fold down the lock tab for the retaining nut. Now that that's out of the way, remove the nut. Nut. And the lock. And finally now, the 
bearing will come off and you can see here I had to use a puller to get it uh, loosened up but all in all it didn't come out too bad. Final, final step now, get the bearing out of the housing. There we are, the piece we've been looking for this whole time. Hey guys, I think I'm going to wrap the video up right here. I'll just call this one part one, disassembly, something like that. And uh, stick around, part two is coming up shortly. I'm going to get the, throwout, the new throwout bearing put in. And there's a few other things I found I want to fix on that little cat as long as I have the bell housing area opened up. So I'll get all that addressed and then I'll start putting it back together. And uh, feel free to subscribe to my channel. It makes it easier to keep up with multi-part videos like this one. If you like what you're seeing, give me a thumbs up down below. Um, feel free to leave some comments. I always enjoy reading through that stuff. So, guys, as always, I thank you for watching. Hope to see you back again. figures.